Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Let's see what's on the bench this week. This week on the bench, we're going to be continuing the lighting work on the two Enterprise E projects. Now, if you've been interested in the repair project, I want to let you know that that has been completed and it has been sent off to the client. Now, the client is aware that it will never be the same as it was when it first left the shop. And they said that they knew that when they opened it up to repair the electronics. But I am planning to build another Enterprise E to showcase at Wonderfest. And that client has said that they want that one. So they're going to be taking the Enterprise E that will be on display at Wonderfest. And that's right. You heard it here first. I will be at Wonderfest 2024. And I'm not just going to be there, you know, walking around and enjoying the event. No, I'm actually got a table in room A to set up. So I will have an Enterprise E on display. I will be there. Stop by if you want to say hello, if you want to see the Enterprise E that I've built. And uh, it's just going to be a great, fun time to connect. I'm going to have a ton of video content as well produced during that weekend. So I am really looking forward to that. But let's get back to the Enterprise E's for a moment. I have managed to get all of that lighting installed into the secondary hall in the last update. And we even got the phaser array LEDs installed. That was great. I did forget to install a few of the 0402 SMDs in the secondary hall. So we're going to get that done this week. We're also going to move on to some of the other lighting that is in the saucer section. And uh, the secondary hall lighting with the nacelles, that was a brute of uh, lighting to put in there. It's just fiddly time consuming. The saucer section is going to be a breeze in comparison. And that's the majority of the lighting. Uh, once the saucer section is done, that'll be the majority of the lighting for this project. So I'm really looking forward to getting the lighting done so that we can get the rest of the ship installed and then move on to one of my favorite parts, the painting scheme. Now that's not going to be this week, but Let's see if we can get as much of the lighting for the project done this week as possible so that we can get that final construction done. So let's get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. So the 0402 SMD that I missed last week just goes right here above the shuttle bay, which isn't too much of a problem. I've got lots of space still underneath here where the cover panel goes on to be able to install that SMD there on the bottom. So no harm, no foul, just a little thing I missed last week. I still have two additional LEDs to install but one goes on the neck cover piece and then the other goes on the cover piece that goes on the bottom. So those will be installed directly to those pieces and then will be wired up once those pieces are ready to be installed. And I won't be wiring up the strobe on the bottom here or the light on the back until those get lighted up because I want to make sure that they all get uh, going to the appropriate places together there. So more to do i'll get that installed and then we'll move on to some additional lighting on the saucer secondary hulls are on their back and i've got the white light installed the 0402 smd the epoxy is curing i've also had to re-epoxy down the lighting strip on the bottom of this one here it just popped off of the brace so the forceps are holding in place i may also need to re-secure down the brace a little bit half of it's just pulled up as I was putting the forceps on to hold it in place. I didn't feel like holding it with my finger for however long it takes for the epoxy to cure. So I'll let all that uh, cure up and then we'll get on to doing some lighting on the saucer section. With most of the lighting now in on those secondary halls, we're going to move on to saucer lighting. And the first area we're going to work on are the impulse engines. And to do that, we have to first create a light box for the impulse engines. Now, on the past Enterprise E, I did up a pattern for a light box that perfectly fits where those impulse engines go and is small enough and has enough clearance to uh, fit with the cover, well, the bottom of the saucer on. So I kept that pattern and what I've done is I've transferred that pattern uh, A and B, A being one side and B being the other so that uh, they're symmetrical to either side and I've copied that over to some sheet styrene, just a random piece that's already been used for other items so that I don't waste anything. I'm going to cut these out 
assemble them together and then install them into the ship with the LEDs in on this section here. Now those LEDs will be far enough back that that should give enough light diffusion where I don't have to add any extra layers of light diffusion because the lenses will be frosted on the inside. So I'm going to get these cut out, assembled, and we'll get some lighting going on those impulse engines. So here we have two sets of impulse engine boxes, one for each side, and they go in like this. I will uh, just have to trim them down on this edge just to make sure that they fit in properly because they do need to be uh, custom fit. Now what I've done is I have sealed in the edges with tulip black and I will give the outside of these a light block coat in the black. I'm not going to worry about repainting them white afterwards because they don't really need to um, be white for reflecting light anywhere. There's lots of white inside the ship. But I will spray paint these black and then I will individually fit these into either side so that the two halves of the saucer go together properly. So they will go in like this. And uh, yeah, they seem to be just a little bit too high. I'll make note of that for next time. I was also thinking that while I'm at it, I should probably do up a third set of these for the other kit that I'm gonna be doing for Wonderfest. Uh, since I've got some of the styrene little bits here left over, I could easily do that up. And I'm right in, kind of in the, in the mode of doing it, so I should probably do up that third set and just keep them on hand for when I do the next kit. So the LEDs have been wired up. Now there's four pins on each of the LEDs. That's because they are the addressable LEDs. These are actually going to be on the same circuit as the deflector dish, which is perfectly fine. Every LED along the chain can be programmed to do whatever we want with it. Um, I have shaved down the leading edges and these corners on both of these. That's so that the top part fits nice and snug over top. One of the issues that we have when doing the light blocked boxes for the impulse engines is that it's quite often a problem getting the piece of the saucer on the bottom here because those boxes take up lots of space and to get light blocking all the way to the edge is very tricky. So those have to be shaved down, sanded down, whatever, so that they can be inserted there and not block the bottom saucer piece going on. So currently they are hot melt glued into place. That's just temporary for testing purposes. And then I have some translucent material covering the impulse engines. It basically just kind of looks white there at the moment. You can't see the bulbs or anything in there. We're going to do a test run on the lighting to see how that works. And that's why I've got these hot melt glued in place. I want to make sure that the lid goes on snug so that it's not bulging here at the impulse engines. And I want to make sure that the LEDs are looking the way that they need to. Now it will look odd because it'll be pure red where the light's coming out. We will have the photo etch parts in here and that will drastically alter the look. But for now, we're just looking for a really nice clean red wash there with slight hot spot because uh, that does tend to show up on impulse engines, but we don't want too much of a hot spot. It's kind of like a bit of a um, balance there, a little bit of a hot spot, but not too much. So I'm going to get the bottom saucer on here, make sure it's all sitting flush. I'll get it hooked up to the Arduino testing program and see how it all looks. And a quick handheld look at how these look as they are mocked up. And uh, they're looking pretty good, nice color. Remember that it won't be open red like this. There will be the photo etch grills covering those. And there is some light leak on one of those windows. We will deal with that. They are only temporarily affixed with hot melt glue. I will never use hot melt glue to permanently affix anything. This is just for the lighting test and the fit test to make sure that the saucer closes properly. And I am happy to say that the saucer, let me see if I can do this, does indeed close up nice and tight. So that tells me that those light boxes have been shaved down enough that they are not interfering with how that part sits on. 
So this is not the final sketch. This is just a lighting sketch, testing sketch that I've got going here where I can just change the color and number of lights. It's really super simple, but it gives me a nice test on how that is looking. That'll look even better with the photo etch parts on there. And uh, I just currently have some uh, translucent plastic pieces. I don't know if I will use those permanently or not. They do look quite nice though, so I might just use that material permanently. We'll have to see. But it is looking very nice indeed. And unfortunately, that's going to be all the time I have for this update. When there are little kids in the house, things happen and time gets away from you. But I'm really happy with the way that the Impulse engines are looking. I will get those permanently installed very soon on both of the saucer sections. And in the next update, we will be looking at hopefully finishing off all of the lighting inside the ship so that we can get final assembly done. That's going to be all of the putty, sanding, all that kind of stuff, priming, and we're going to try to hopefully get to painting this thing very, very soon. That's always one of my favorite parts. Now, if you are interested in perhaps supporting me and my channel, and if you are in the line for a new car and looking electric, one of the ways that you can support me if you happen to buy a Tesla is to use my referral link. I have the link in the description of this video and I will post it on the about page to my channel as well. I would love for you to support me that way because when you do that, I get free supercharging miles to help me get to Wonderfest and you get to save money on your purchase. So it is a win-win both ways. I hope that you have enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy if you do, but for now, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.